stage 14 uh, of the Tour de France. And uh, right now, the biggest podium threat after today's stage seems to be COVID. Now, Remco already had to abandon the Giro once when he was wearing the pink jersey. So if he would have to abandon the Tour de France whilst on the podium, that would be truly terrible. So I'm hoping he stays healthy um, and COVID-free. Now, as for stage 14 itself, uh, Remco was strong again today. Um, he tried to uh, follow Vingegaard today. Um, and I think he tried to do that just a tad too long. But I can understand why he did it. Because um, on the climb, there was like a small intermediate uh, point in which it went downhill. And I think he was hoping to reach that point. Um, but he couldn't quite make it. So like on the stage, Pogacar uh, attacked with about four or five kilometers to go. And after a while again, Vingard went after him and um, Vingard got close, like to a couple of seconds. But then that dip came and Pogacar got to breathe and then he got his kick back and just rode away again from, from Vingard. I think like if even a pool was, uh, could hold on to Vingard just a tad longer, he could have probably stayed with Vingard. But couldn't quite reach that that get downhill gap um so that's unfortunate for him and um it's unfortunate for for Vingard as well because because Pogacar managed to hold off Vingard with a couple of seconds before that downhill um moment um the gap just blew apart like it was it went from like 10 seconds all the way to 40 seconds and I think if, if this would be like a steady climb without any um, intervals like that, then Pogacar would probably have been caught by, by Vingegaard. But this time around, the interval was there and um, it cost Vingegaard a lot because Pogacar just needed that little breather to just kick off again. And that's what happened. And he just flew away after he got that little breather. Um, as for uh, Evenepoel, he finished on a minute and 10 on, on uh, Pogacar and on about, um, what was it again? I think it was about, um, Fingard finished on 40 seconds off of Pogacar. So that's like 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds in between uh, Vingard and uh, Evenepoel. So Evenepoel loses one spot. Uh, he moves from uh, number two to number three. But that's still good, like he's now um, 25 seconds, I think, from second place. And uh, given what's to come, he'll probably lose more time on, on Pogacar and Vingegaard because there's still a lot of climbing to do. And even though Aeon pulls the third best climber, there's still some bit of a gap between him and the other two. So we just have to accept that. Um, like Aeon pulls not like uh, an all-in-all -all climber like, the, like Vingegaard is. Like if yeah, even a pool would uh, really um, enjoy having a Tour de France like the way it was uh, during Indrain's time, where they had like lots and lots of flat TTs, like hundreds of kilometers of flat TT. Now the amount of TT uh, kilometers has been reduced, and so it's a bit uh, worse now for even pool than it was back in the day. But you know, it is what it is. You have to fight on the terrain that's given to you. And uh, Enopoul is doing very well during his first tour. So yeah, uh, a good day. And hopefully um, that remains true for tomorrow. Because tomorrow is a very tough day. Like, it's uh, probably the toughest day in this tour uh, yet. Like, the gravel stage was dangerous for mechanical stuff. And, and But tomorrow's stage will just be plain hard. So hopefully he gets through it fine without... Um, yeah, cracking and just staying steady and being able to follow Pogacar and Vingard for as long as possible and maybe like lose 30 seconds. That would be good, I think. Oh, well, we'll see you tomorrow.